Welcome to HB Tuner's GM Gen 5 Training Part 20. In this training module, we're going to be exploring how the knock control is going to function within our spark timing routine. So we're actually going to be looking at some log data, understanding how we can actually make our changes based on what our data logs are showing us in terms of knock back into our spark timing routine. So we're making sure the engine's safe. We don't want to see knock retard happen. That is going to be something that we want to avoid. So we're going to learn the steps in order to prevent that. Also taking a look at how we can have knock retard being logged and triggered when there's no knock conditions. So there's a lot of things to discuss here. Let's jump in and let's check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our knock control once again in our GM Gen 5 applications. Our last tutorial, we did an overview of the knock control and how the tables worked. This tutorial, we're going to be focusing on looking at some VCM scanner logged data and seeing how the knock control is performing, looking at specific histograms so we can focus on where we need to potentially make update changes in our spark timing tables, or we also might need to make changes into our start of injection table or into our command rail pressure for working in the direct injection, or we also may need to change our variable cam timing and going after that. There's a lot of moving pieces of the puzzle here. We're going to discuss how all this fits into the knock control because this is a relatively complex topic and there are, again, a lot of different things that could affect the knock retard in the knock control. Let's jump in here. First things first, we're going to open up the calibration file and take a look at our spark timing tables and all the knock control tables. That's going to be found here under our engine tab. Now I'm working in a 2018 Yukon Denali file. Any Gen 5 file will work to follow along with what I'm talking about here in the tutorial. So I'm going to move in here from our general tab and go across under our spark tab. And then we have our four separate sub tabs under spark, advanced, retard, dwell, and knock sensors. Now we're only going to be focusing here on advanced, retard, and knock sensors. And what we're going to be doing primarily here is learning what we need to update in our base table values here in order to get rid of knock at full throttle conditions. This is what we're going to be focusing on first. Then we'll talk about part throttle knock and what we can do in those situations. So what we're going to do is jump out of our VCM editor because we've went through this pretty extensively. We're going to now move right into the VCM scanner and start to take a look at some of this log data and making sense as to how the knock control is going to function. So let's jump in here to our VCM scanner. I have this open right now and I have a data log open that we're able to take a look at right away. This data log is going to be labeled and saved as small KR knock retard watt pool. Now this data log can be found here if we go into our Gen 5 training course folder, sample data logs, knock tuning subfolder, a couple, couple data logs in here that we're going to be taking a look at. The small knock retard watt pool is what I'm going to start off with here to take a look and talk about the spark tuning process. So you see we have all kinds of information here in our chart versus time. Let's focus out and let's find the full throttle area of where I was going into in this particular data log, which is going to be right here. We'll find these two large red spikes. This is going to be engine speed here. That's going to be where we want to focus in on. Let's use our zoom in function and let's take a look here. Now in our chart versus time, we'll find that we have all kinds of information in our very first chart versus time. If we go down here, we can find this parameter KR knock retard, and it's going to have a value here 0, 0.0. That means that there's no knock retard being applied at this precise moment where my cursor's at. Now, because we're having things plotted in this chart versus time, what we're looking for is a, a bump or a raise in our red trace line, which is associated to our knock retard. In here, this is going to be the start of our full throttle pull. We can see as I'm transitioning across, I'm starting off here at roughly 1600 RPM. And as I go up here, you can see I'm approaching the top of the gear at roughly 6000 before the rev limiter is applied. What we're finding here, taking a look, is that we have a knock retard event. It's taking out a half a degree of timing. Now, this is completely acceptable. So if you're looking at any full throttle data logs and your knock retard is showing less than a degree, there's nothing to worry about. We don't need to take action and detune anything in our main spark timing tables, the base spark timing tables. You don't need to go after anything in there. However, if you're seeing more than a degree, two degrees, four degrees, eight degrees, the more the knock retard, the, the value is increasing that it's pulling out, the higher the cylinder pressure spike was recorded from the knock sensor and the more dangerous that is going to be for the engine. So we don't want to continue it running it when it's having that high of a knock retard happening. Now, what we need to do here is unpack this a little bit further because we find that we have knock retard. 
but we'll find, and it's nothing to worry about in this case, but we could find that this knock retard could be taking place based on some outside conditions or factors that we need to review a little further. So just because we see knock retard doesn't mean that it's actual knock. Now it could be noise. So we've talked about the knock sensor threshold tables. We have a multiplier that's going to be raising or lowering the thresholds. Our knock sensor signal coming from the, the event, the knock event, it has to exceed the floor or the threshold for it to trigger an actual knock event to be able to start to kick in this knock retard from happening. We talked about all of that. Now in this situation, it could be noise from the engine that's false noise that could be triggering a knock retard, or it could be real knock. It could actually have knock. It's very possible. Or it could also be, in this case, at full throttle conditions. It could also be related to our direct injection. Now, it may not make a lot of sense. Let me break this down, how this could actually happen. Now, we've talked about our direct injection in previous tutorials. If we Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.